So when you're Betfair trading, one of the things that you're trying to do is to work out, you know, is the price on this coming in? Is that going out? Uh, how are they interacting with each other and so on? And, you know, if we look at this market, you can see that this came down fairly recently, reached the bottom of its traded range, and then it's headed back out. This is stuck at tens. This is headed towards uh, the top of its current range. And how's that going to influence the price on the favorite? These sort of questions. Well, what about getting it displayed right in front of you inside BetAngel? If you're interested in trading with BetAngel, then visit our website where you can download a free trial of BetAngel Professional and BetAngel Trader. If you want to learn how to use them, then visit the Academy where we give you a detailed structured walkthrough of each product. And if you're an existing user, then head on over to the forum where we have a load of files for you to download to customize and use within BetAngel. So if you look at the one click screen, you can use it for a whole variety of different reasons. So you can actually obviously place bets and trades on it. You can do all those sort of clever things, but you can also get it to display information. So I've got a couple of columns over here uh, that are giving me uh, bits of information. And what this is doing is it's telling me the correlation of pricing within the market. So we can see that these two particular selections here um, have decreased over a period of time. Um, so which ones have, you know, which selections has this directly affected? Well, you can see down here straight away that it's these two selections that have responded um, to basically this pressure within the market. But you can also clearly see here that we've got activity here, here, here and here. It's either keeping the price flat or coming in. And you can see that's accounted for in the majority by these three particular runners. So what are, what are we actually looking at here? If I uh, bring the headers back on, you can begin to see exactly what we're doing here. What we're actually looking at um, are basically uh, two distinct columns. So we're basically looking at the implied probability that is uh, how, how that has changed over the last 20 minutes. But we're also looking at the volume weighted average price over the last 10 minutes. Now, I'm showing you a simplistic version of what you can do on BetAngel here, but you could actually create columns that say over the last minute, five, 10, 20, and so on. Um, and that will allow you to display all of this information. So you can see that this activity here is uh, continuing. Uh, it's been, you know, it's continuing to strengthen at this particular moment in time. But by using the color gradients available within BetAngel, you're seeing you get an immediate visual representation of what's going on. And what you can do, of course, is you can actually undock the one click screen. Um, and then you can pin that and put that somewhere else. Again, I'm keeping this quite simplistic for you. And then you can actually bring up your ladder screen to give you an indication as to, you know, information that you may want to use to actively trade. But, you know, I'm trying to show you conceptually some of the stuff that you can do. There's pretty much unlimited amounts of information you can gather via automation, which you can push to the one click screen. And you can actually push this information to the ladder as well. But it will give you a nice clue um, as to how the market is developing, where the prices are, um, you know, and the level of interaction that you're seeing between certain runners. Um, and that's obviously going to influence how you're likely to trade. So let's examine exactly how we did this, but also how we could display this information on the ladder as well. So you can see I've added in some information into here. You can see that the price on this runner has not really changed much. This has shifted 3% negative. This has shifted 3% negative. Um, and you can see each one of these is negative. So there must be something else that has moved um, significantly in favor. And um, if we actually look on the one click screen, you'll be able to see this a little bit easier. So we can actually see here negative, 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 big positive for Ballyville at the back end of the book. So can you see the difference between looking at something on the ladder and the one click screen? It's sort of beneficial to be able to get an overview of data from the market, which you can put on the one click screen, detach and overlay on the ladder. But you can see you can also display this information on the ladder um, as well. Um, so let me show you how the data is derived and also how we can display it in multiple locations. So I've paused BetAngel at the moment so we can examine exactly um, how this was done and the way that we set things up. But if we look at the ladder first, uh, if you go to the ladder settings, which is this area here, you can actually display 
a whole range of things. These are all of the settings that you can use within the ladder. There are an awful lot of them, but the one we're interested in is the additional information area. So you can see here, what I've done is I've ticked show area. I've added a border, Wee. we can remove that quite easily if you so wish. Um, then we've set up how we want the text to be displayed. So we've said red bold in the center. And then basically we've put a label on here called movement. So we've typed this in, we've typed in the word movement, and then we've said shared uh, information type, shared stored value. And that value is called current IP for the selection. Um, so this is basically displaying it with these attributes, the current stored value, uh, current IP for any particular selection within the market. And that means that basically this information and the information you saw on the one click screen um, came in via a stored value. And um, when we do that, uh, the way that you create stored values is by using a little bit of automation. So let's go over to Guardian and have a look at the automation that we used. So if you look at Guardian, you can see we've um, brought in the automation rule uh, movement tracker. And in order to do that, this is available on the forum. So if you go to the forum and download all of the files uh, that we've used in this particular uh, process, you can basically go to the automation, import a rules file, and then bring in this particular piece of automation in to the rules. Now, of course, this could be running on top of other automation files. So if you've got a semi or fully automated process, you can still use this particular rule because you can actually layer multiple automation rules on top of each other. But if we look at the rules file, um, I can quickly describe uh, exactly what it's doing for you here. Basically at 20 minutes out, it's storing the implied probability, the implied chance of any particular selection within this market. And it's also storing the volume weighted average price. It does that once, and then it goes through this process of updating the stored values basically uh, continuously. You can see it's got unlimited triggers here. It rearms on every refresh and it's applying to every selection. And then what it's actually doing there is it's basically storing the implied probability for the current selection being the back book of a selection. And then it's comparing it to the opening price that we stored all the way up here. Um, and then it's also doing the same for volume weighted average price. The reason I'm not talking about VWAP at the moment is I think that requires a separate video so that you can understand exactly what VWAP is. Um, but nonetheless, this piece of automation does both of these. And I'll save the explanation of VWAP for another video. But it continually updates all of that. And then when the market goes in play, it clears down all of those values. Um, so it's quite a simple piece of automation. So you can see here that uh, this particular race has now finished. And if we go to the next market, and I've got Bet Angel active and monitoring the markets now, um, it will start populating this particular data, but it will only populate it when we reach 20 minutes. And if you want to modify the file so that it covers different time periods, um, then that's relatively easy to do because you can go in and edit the automation and you can get it to start at an earlier time. Or if you want to get a little bit more adventurous, you can put in multiple points where it fixes the value at say 20, 10, five, uh, two minutes and one, and then it can do a direct comparison and display those on additional custom columns. But yeah, there's an awful lot of information that um, you can use within BetAngel. The automation allows you to create really interesting subsets of data, which you can then display on the one click in the ladder screen to significantly improve your ability to profit from your Betfair trading.